Um, okay, it is 11.34 a.m. and I'm going to call uh, the, no, there's a number in here somewhere. The business meeting of the 82nd World Science Fiction Society, or, yeah, to order. Okay. Um, for those uh, joining us online, I do want to briefly say I'm very sorry for the delay. There were, shockingly, technical issues. Um, I'm sure you weren't able to predict that. Um, but we are now up and running. Um, my name is Jesse Lip. I use they, them pronouns. I will be the presiding officer for the business meeting. Um, my proper form of address is mix chairperson. Um, I theoretically also have a sign that says that up there to help you remember that. Um, we're gonna do things a little more quickly than we normally do in terms of our introductions and everything. Um, but to introduce uh, the rest of the head table, uh, we have Alex Axe, who uses they, them pronouns at the end, who will be serving as our secretary. Martin Pine, he, him, is our parliamentarian. Warren Buff, also he, him, is our deputy presiding officer. Ira Alexandra, they, them, is our timekeeper. Chris Hensley, he, him, up here at the front, is our floor manager, who will be helping out with microphones and stuff like that. And then off-site, we have Jared Dashoff, he, him, who has been um, an advisor and just general support for this team. Um, and then over on the side, we have new team member, JT, the amazing technical person, who, uh, this was not in his plan for today. Um, so we are very appreciative for all of that work. Um, Mar so we normally have a video that we run at the beginning of things to sort of um, introduce some of how we handle things at the business meeting um, because of time as well as other technical issues. We're not gonna play that, so our apologies for that. Um, but our parliamentarian is going to run through just a few procedural notes um, to help people uh, sort of know how we're going to be, uh, just how we handle things. So I will turn it over to Martin. Point of order? Yes, there's a point of order. Uh, no, we do not have, the question was if we can play the video at the end of the meeting. Um, we do not have the technical capability to do so. Um, if you go to wispis.org on the business meeting page, it is linked there and anyone is welcome to watch it um, on their own time. Thank you. Okay, Martin. Okay, a few procedural notes. Recording the, meet, recording the business meeting, unless voted otherwise and except we are in, except when we are in executive session, which we will have more details on a moment later. Uh, this session will be recorded. Anyone can record and or photograph the business meeting. The recordings will be posted. Are we doing World Con Events Channel? Yeah. Yeah, to the World Con Events Channel as quickly as possible. Uh, in, uh, it's actually out in the foyer. Uh, note, the, note your presence for today on the attendance sheet if you have not already done so and pick up a copy of the agenda. Please silence any sound making devices like your cell phone. Uh, when you are speaking, uh, come, come to the microphone up, up in the front and speak into it. Please, there are two microphones. There is a bit tall yellow microphone and a less tall blue microphone. Please pick the microphone more appropriate to your height. Please face the audience, but direct your speech to the chair. It should, it sh you sh this debate should be of the form as mixed chairperson, blah, 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 and not members of WISFIS, blah, blah, blah. Please identify your pronouns. So if I was starting, I would say, Martin Pine, he, him, mixed chairperson, I, am rise, I rise to speak in favor of whatever. After speaking, please visit the secretary so they can get your name correct and it is not misspelled in the minutes. If you are unable to stand or come to the microphone, please make this clear to the presiding officer and a microphone will be brought to you. To get recognition from the chair, normally you stand up. If you are not able to stand up, the, the presiding the the floor manager has a series set of colored papers. If you do not already have one, get one from the floor manager and wave the colored paper when you wish to be recognized. Debate need not be factual. However, it must be civil and germane to the, to the item being discussed. You must, if 
germaneness is a fancy word for saying it has to be relevant and has to be targeted to the item under discussion and it can't go you cannot go debating something entirely different than what we are discussing the head table is here to help you if you do not understand what is going on please rise for a request and say that you are making a request for information that is considered a privileged question so you do have to so you so you can wave your hand or shout that you have a request for information over those wishing to debate if you are not sure how to phrase what you are trying to do just say what you say what you are trying to do the head table will help you figure out what how to phrase that in a parliamentary correct way uh, when we are dealing with motions we may have a we may get kind of in a stack of motions think of it as an like an onion it has layers uh, in this thank you Jared for that uh, in the no no that was me and then Jared <laughs> used it okay thank you Thank you, Jared, for stealing it from Jesse. Uh, <laughs> an example. Yes. Yes. So we'll, we will use that as an example, actually. In the center is the main motion. That's what's listed as an agenda. So say Jesse makes a main motion. And then there's an outer layer whenever there's a subsidiary motion. So say Jared moves to amend Jesse's motion. And then we'd, and then first we deal with the amendment, and then we deal and then we have to deal with the amendment before we can get to the main motion. And if there was, and if say, I make a subsidiary, some other kind of subsidiary motion to that amendment, uh, we can't, we, secondary amendments are not in order, refer, but, refer yeah, order. But, well, if, but if we say to refer to committee, then we would have to deal with my motion to refer, and then if that motion to refer was voted down, we'd deal with Jesse's, we'd deal with Jared's amendment, and then we would deal with Jesse's main motion. If, if a ruling of if you disagree with the ruling of the chair you may appeal that motion motion you can sorry you can appeal that ruling and if that appeal is debatable the process for resolving that appeal is as follows the chair will let's just say you can appeal it and we'll yes explain it if it we happens. will explain it if it we will we will go back to the slide if it happens uh, th this yeah. takes it it's easier to see if see it in action and hopefully we won't have any appeals and then we can just skip this. Okay, I'll go ahead and get this. Okay, okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get into things. Um, before we get started, um, I do have a couple additional notes. Um, so first of all, when we start getting to debate, those of you who have been at a meeting that I'm presiding over um, might already remember how I do things. Um, but for those that don't remember, for those that are not, um, so when we get to debate, um, Please, I, once a speaker finishes, I will say, for example, that was a speech in favor, do we have any speeches against? That is when you can rise to be recognized and I will call on somebody to speak. Please do not play the game of predicting when the speaker, the exact nanosecond they will cease so that you can time your knees to rise perfectly the second they stop speaking. Um, my, I, I don't play that game. Uh, my brain can't parse that. Um, so please wait until I ask for additional speakers to stand to be recognized. If you do have a privileged motion, um, you can, if absolutely necessary, interrupt a speaker, um, but also you can rise to be recognized sort of before I've finished asking if there are people wishing to speak against or in favor. Um, but if you are sort of participating in a normal debate, that will be the process. Um, Obviously, uh, even before it became 1130, we have a lot of stuff to get through this year. This is the largest business meeting agenda. I mean, look, I didn't look at all of them, but I'm pretty sure ever by a lot. Um, and we have a limited amount of time. So I'm going to ask all of y'all's help to get done with what we have before us. We will need to move quickly, but moving quickly does not mean steamrolling people. It does not mean failing to explain what, it, what is going on. It does not mean disenfranchising people in the room who are not familiar with our process. We are still going to do everything we can to make sure that we are um, proceeding through things in a way that folks are able to understand. So for those of you who are regular business meeting attendees, I'm going to be asking for your help right now. 
I would like you all to show some leadership and discretion in regards to debate, in regards to procedural motions. I understand why there are giggles, but I'm being serious right now. We have a lot to get through. Please help us, help the society, and help yourselves by showing some leadership so that we can get through what we need to get through. If we work together, we will do it. Okay. So, moving along. Uh, in the, so the printed copy of the agenda has all of the, um, the new business before us as well as the business passed on. Um, we did not print all of the reports that were submitted. Those are available in the online um, version of the agenda that you can download on the Glasgow website. Uh, we are not going to be taking verbal uh, summations of reports. However, if there are questions about reports, that would be in order. So the um, first uh, items before us are our committee reports, um, which are on page third nine um, is the list of the committees and then um, on the back half of the agenda that is on the online version. Um, so were there any questions about the uh, Mark Protection Committee reports? Great. Right. Seeing none, um, we are going to move into nominations for the Mark Protection Committee. Um, there are three um, uh, spots available on the Mark Protection Committee. Uh, we, for those unfamiliar, the Mark Protection Committee, uh, we have uh, nine folks who are elected to that committee by the business meeting. We elect three and they serve for three year terms. Um, so uh, nominations are open. Is there anyone wishing to nominate? Um, and go ahead and just shout out the name. We'll restate it. Um, my name is Judith Dean, this paper. I nominate Bruce Farr. Right, Bruce Farr has been nominated. Thank you. My name is Alan Bond. I nominate Chris Rose. Okay. Alan Bond has nominated Chris Rose. I'm going to ask all of the head table staff to help out with writing this because if we all do it, we will get, we will make sure we, that we overlap and get everything. My name. Yep. <laughs> My name is Kevin Stanley. Uh, I nominate Linda Denneroff. Okay, Kevin Stanley nominates Linda Denneroff. Kate Dunn. Nope. Sorry, Kate Secor <laughs> <laughs> nominates Cliff Dunn. We got there eventually. My name is Joni Drill Dashoff. She, her. I nominate Mark Richards. Joni Dashoff is nominating Mark Richards. Jill Eastlake nominating Donald Eastlake. Jill Eastlake is nominating Don Eastlake. I guess you said Donald, but I said Don. Um, James Bacon nominates Alan Fleming. <laughs> Nicholas White nominates Olav Rockney. You can speak to Nicholas for the specific spelling later if you want to. Um, are there any other nominations? Okay, I'm gonna read through the list um, just to make sure that I say all the names people are expecting to hear. So we have nominated Bruce Farr, Chris Rose, Linda Denneroff, Cliff Dunn, Mark Richards, Don Eastlake, Alan Fleming, and Olav Rockney. Are there any other nominations? Okay, seeing none, nominations are closed. Um, I believe all of the people that were listed um, I saw in the room, except for Al, is Alan Fleming here? here? Oh, you are, there you are. There's a person directly between me and you. So I'm assuming you're consenting to nominations since you didn't say no. Um, so I believe, so yeah, everybody is here. And so, um, unless they object, I'm assuming they are consenting to nomination. Um, and so then we will do the balloting for the Mark Protection Committee uh, tomorrow morning. Do you have a question? Um, can you list just the names, not the nominees? I will list the names of who was nominated again. So the nominees are Bruce Farr, Chris Rose, 
Linda Denneroff, Cliff Dunn, Mark Richards, Dawn Eastlake, Alan Fleming, and Olav Rockney. Um, and so we will have the ballots for those tomorrow um, with folks' names on it, um, and we will handle that voting tomorrow. Okay, next. Um, the next report we had was from the Nitpicking nit and Fly Specking Committee. Were there any questions about that report? Seeing none. Um, the Worldcon Runner's Guide Editorial Committee, were there any questions about that report? Okay. Next up, we have the financial reports. Um, so for those, oh, there was a question? Sorry. Oh, thank you. See, this is what happens when I try to move too quickly. Um, is there any objection to um, continuing those committees as currently constituted? Hearing none, um, all of those committees, um, all of the standing committees of the business meeting um, are continued with their current membership for the next year. Okay, got that done. Financial reports. Um, so the Lone Star Con financial report was not um, uh, submitted in time to be included in the agenda. However, there have been copies printed um, that I believe many of you have gotten. I think there are more in that foyer area. Um, so you can take a look at that if you want, and that will be included in the, um, in the minutes as well. Um, I did want to note that there are um, a couple reports uh, that are final financial reports. So I want to thank uh, Shycon and Pemicon. Um, and then I believe, DC, yeah, Discon dispersed all their money to Bwawa, so I believe that Bwawa will need to keep reporting on those funds. But um, we want to thank the, nope, okay, it was the final. We can talk later about making sure that we are clear on the reporting guidelines and if there's any disagreements. But for now, we will say thank you to ShyCon and PemiCon and DiscCon for their final financial reports and dispersing all of their funds. And I am going to ask you to applaud. Are there any other questions about any of the financial reports? So I recognize Cliff, but. Cliff Dunn, he, him. Uh, I was just wondering if Lone Star Con was in fact planning to disperse all their funds before the heat death of the universe. <laughs> Is there anyone from Lone Star Con here? Okay. All right, the question has been noted for the record. Um, or it. Brandy's coming up to a mic. Yes, okay. Yes, they will be dispersed Who are you? before the, uh, sorry, Randall Shepard or Randy, he, him. Mixed chairperson. Yes, Lone Star Con 3 will disperse before the heat death of the universe. But no, <laughs> we have been doling out in a very mm -hmm. measured fashion, we, we think, effectively. So yep, thank we'll you. be reporting. Thanks. Okay, can I please see your name tag? Sure. Yep. Okay, uh, I believe okay, thank you. there was a question over here somewhere. Yeah. Sorry, Randy's very tall, and I can't see through him. Oh, wait, one moment. It sounds like a podcast. It's, it's, it's dirt. It's on now. We can, it's definitely on now. That's what that sound is. Judith Bemis, she, her. Um, I did not see the Pemicon financial report as out, I saw it as outstanding in the minutes. Is right. it then uh, included online? Yeah, so the Pemicon financial report was submitted late because it was their final financial report. Uh, we published an updated version of the agenda that included it, so that should be the version of the agenda, or that is the version of the agenda that is currently available on the Glasgow website. Um, because of PDF caching, and a tech person can explain it better. Oh, and it's on, it's on the screen behind me, actually. 
Um, but you can also download it from the Glasgow website. You may need to clear your cache to get it to download the updated version of the PDF. Yep. Are there any other questions about financial reports? Okay. We are going to move to our um, standing rule changes. So this is the preliminary business meeting. Um, and so there are some things that the preliminary business meeting is allowed to do and some things that it are not. But right now we are on the things that it is allowed to do. Um, so the first items before us are standing rule changes. These are changes to how we run the business meeting. Um, the, when a, uh, sorry, when a change to the standing rules is passed, it becomes effective um, at the end of this Worldcon or functionally at the beginning of the next Worldcon. The body can choose by a two-thirds vote to enact a standing rule change immediately. Um, so the first item we have before us is C.1 Magnum PI, which is on page 11 of your agenda. Um, and is, would Cliff like to speak to it? Okay, I will recognize the speaker of the motion. Yes, and I, yep, I remembered that as I was talking. Um, I am going to suggest a debate time of, oh, thanks, four minutes for this item. Is there any objection to four minutes of debate time? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. And that means two minutes on each side for anyone not familiar with how we do things. Mixed chair, Cliff Dunn, he, him. Uh, simply put, given the amount of stuff we have this year, it, there's a good chance that we are, especially after the technical issues, not going to get through all of the PBM business at the PBM. This is just to ensure that any item that comes up can be subject to PI when it comes up for the first time, even if that's not at the PBM. Thank you. Right. I'm going to call the meeting to order right now. It is not in order for people to shout out questions. I understand. I'm going to take a request for information asking for the definition of the PBM. And the chair will answer the question that the PBM stands for the preliminary business meeting, which is the first business meeting that happens. According to our rules, certain motions like postpone indefinitely are only in order at the preliminary business meeting. However, it what this rule change says is that if an item doesn't come up for the first time at the preliminary meeting because we run out of time, presumably, the first time it comes up at a main business meeting, postponed indefinitely, would still be in order um, so that it is not restricted to just the preliminary meeting in that circumstance. Does that answer the request for information? Okay, was there another request for information? Okay. Is, for what purpose do you rise? Okay, please come to a microphone. Todd Dashoff, he, him. Uh, I would like the chair to at least state uh, Mix's interpretation as to when we take the vote, will you consider either hands or voice vote as sufficient to satisfy the two-thirds requirement, or are you going to require an actual physical count? So, um, it, generally speaking, I always have the vote to the final yes or no vote on an amendment B by a show of hands because I just feel more comfortable that way. Um, I will, because it is possible that somebody would be okay with this, w w would want this change but not want it to be enacted immediately, um, I will, after we vote on the standing rule change, if it passes, um, I will take a motion that I will just sort of take as coming from Cliff Dunson's and it's in the text of the motion to see if the body wants to adopt it immediately. And then we will take a vote on that, but it will be by hands, but it will be two that, separate votes. Fine. Thank you. That I want to state for the record was not a ruling. Don't put it in the resolutions and rulings of continuing effect, because I'm not trying to break the record. It, that was just me explaining a thing. Okay, so we had a speech in favor of the motion. Are there any, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, I don't see anyone. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor? 
seeing none, it seems like we are ready to vote. All those in favor of C.1 Magnum PI, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. And the motion passes. And then for the purpose of the minutes, I'm going to say that a motion was made by Cliff Dunn to enact it immediately. Second. Do I? And it was seconded, thank you. Um, all those in favor of enacting C.1 Magnum PI immediately, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against, thank you. That would be two thirds. And so C.1 Magnum PI is now in effect. Okay. Moving on to C.2 strike 1.4. This is also on page 11. Um, I will recognize the maker of the motion, uh, which looks like it's Kate, uh, to, speak in, to speak to it. Uh, I am proposing a debate time. I will remember to do that before I recognize spe speakers eventually. I am proposing a debate time of four minutes on this. Is there any objection to four minutes? Seeing none, debate time is set at four minutes. My name is Kate Secor. My pronouns are she and her. Um, this is just a fairly simple change to allow the convention to schedule meetings at times that may be more convenient or to have split sessions, like a morning session and an afternoon session. The current rules require a specific start time, and we just want to loosen that up and, and let us have more options. That's a touch screen. Yes. Uh, thank you. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speech, speak against? Okay, I will recognize uh, Lisa in the back. Some of us here are old enough to remember. Who are you? Oh, um, my apologies, Ms. Um, Lisa Hertel, she, they. Some of us here are old enough to rem remember when one convention started the business meeting at, I believe, 8 a.m. I don't think I could actually, like, get up, shower, dress, eat, and get over here by 8 a.m. from my hotel. Right, thank you. That was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Yeah, go ahead and, yeah. Uh, I don't know if this is for or against. What do I do? Okay, so who are you? Hi, my name is Gail Terman. I use she, they pronouns. Okay, and so you are making, I believe, a parliamentary inquiry about if you don't know if it's a speech in favor or against Correct. what you're supposed to do. Um, you're supposed to decide before you speak, <laughs> <laughs> to be quite frank. Okay, I guess um, I'm against, so I should if, wait, right? If if I recognize you for a speech in favor and against, and it is my determination that you were actually doing the other thing, okay. then you, the time would be counted against the side that you actually spoke on. Okay. Yep. So I think I'm against, so I should wait. Yes. Correct, yes. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so we had a speech in favor. I'm going to remind people not to pop up until I ask if people are, if they're ready, unless you were popping up for a privileged motion. Okay, Are, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Okay. The issue is that I don't want to play the game of I happen to be looking over here when the speaker finished and therefore people over here get seen. I want to be prepared for people to be ready to be asking to be recognized when I'm ready to see that so that I'm being fair and equitable to everyone. Thank you. Uh, Terry Ash, she, her, um, and just because we extend the meeting times, that doesn't mean we are obligated to start at 8 in the morning. It means we can add afternoon sessions, which frankly would be amazing. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay. Do you have a privilege motion you're wanting to make? Okay. Go ahead. Okay, that's fine. Spit. Jason Spitzer, he, him. Uh, I would speak against this because, again, I'm worried about when the start times would be. And while adding afternoon sessions would be good, or starting perhaps a bit later would be good, uh, I believe the rule 1.4, it's small print, it's not in front of me, says we cannot start before 10 a.m. 
it doesn't, and it says we can't start after 1300. It does not say we can't start toward 1300. I don't know how much later we'd want to add or start, but I don't see a problem with this, and it does give some consistency across multiple conventions in multiple countries. So I would be against. Thank you. That was a speech against. Thank you. Uh, uh, can I ask the timekeeper how we're doing on time? Uh, we have Turn on your mic. We have one minute and 26 seconds remaining for and one minute and 12 seconds remaining against. Okay, thank you. Is there any, so that was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Okay. Joshua Krungold, he, him. Uh, we have, uh, world cons are now, ha um, ha uh, have now broken um, the old structure. Sometimes we have a world con with more remote participation than local. Give the, um, give the meeting, give the con the flexibility it needs to do what it needs to do. That was a speech in favor. Is there any? Josh. Josh. Oh, yep, sorry. Secretary, I need your name. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, I'm gonna recognize. Can you hand the mic, please? Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. I'm Gail Terman, she, her. I can somehow send you my spelling later if I need to. Uh, I, um, I think against the motion as written because I think that there was an intent behind setting the times because, again, someone had said that 8 a.m. was a thing. I also think that... Uh, I know that masking as a voluntary guideline isn't everyone's favorite thing, but I, like, I, I don't know how to do this in the parliamentary structure yet. I, I feel like there's a room for a guideline without striking the, the rule entirely and saying things like, we expect that, or we hope that you would start it like whatever, but maybe not in firm language. I don't know what to do with that. Thank you. That was a speech against. Cool. I'm going to... One moment. First, I'm going to answer the inquiry that was sort of in the speech. Sorry. No, that's okay. I, as we said, we know that not everybody is familiar with all of our processes. Can Chris, can you please get the badge so that the secretary yeah, can spell the name? You just borrow the badge for me. Um, so, standing rule changes are are rules. Um, if the body wishes to suggest or hope things, um, that is generally done in the form of a non-binding resolution. Um, however, the new business deadline has passed. It is up to the body if um, a resolution did get submitted about anything, really, um, whether or not they would want to accept that um, at this time. Um, there was another parliamentary inquiry. How does one make a transition? I believe the parliamentary inquiry from Ellsworth Cobar is about a friendly amendment. Yes, I was going to say, okay. how do I make a friendly amendment? Okay, friendly amendments um, are not a thing, actually. Uh, sorry, this is, a, this is an in-joke among parliamentarians that it's a I, thing that people want to do, but it's not actually a thing. Right. Um, so you could make an amendment, um, and we would proceed through the procedures for amendments. However, um, a friendly amendment, which normally means like you suggest an amendment, and then the maker of the motion says, yeah, I'm cool with that. Um, that's not a thing because the motion no longer belongs to the proposer. Um, it belongs to the body as a whole, and so it is now only the body as a whole who can choose to change it. Okay. In, uh, other, words, in other words, I need to not do anything. You, you are, it is in order to make an amendment. It, it would not be in order to do a friendly amendment since that's okay. not a thing. Um, I would just amendment be, amend it because people are worried. I, so... Is this another parliamentary inquiry? No. Or Okay. Changing. If you are wanting to make the amendment, I would need to recognize you for that purpose. Yes. Um, we had a speech against. Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor? Okay, I'm going to recognize the woman in the back. Sorry, the person in the back. My apologies. Hello, my name is Rochelle Rosa. Pronouns are she, her, hers. I would strongly urge the body to consider the equity of all members present, especially considering we do have another motion uh, later on in this meeting that is addressing the uh, business meeting in its entirety in the committee should it be passed. Uh, so any concerns regarding the time frame of, uh, res related to this particular motion may be addressed in that committee should it be passed. Um, therefore, it would be, it would, should that committee be passed in conjunction with this motion, 
um, there would be accessibility in um, regards to uh, you know, observation and stuff like that. So I think this is complementary to that future motion, so I strongly urge um, the body to consider the equity of, um, of the, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, I believe that was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Okay, I'm gonna recognize Elizabeth. Uh, Mixed chairperson, we're around 30 seconds remaining on each side. Okay, we have about 30 seconds of time remaining on each side. We are also at five minutes until the lunch break, just so El you know. Elspeth Kovar, um, I agree with whatever she said. Um, Elspeth Kovar, she, her, I think we shouldn't pass it for the same reason, because it will give the committee freedom to decide what to do. Okay. Thank you. That was a speech against, and can you... Please give your badge. Okay. Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yep. Hi, Karina Stark, she, her. Um, I am in favor of this because um, I'm also in favor of the later things that. Uh, will allow for virtual attendance of the business meeting, and I do believe that with Worldcon being more worldwide in the past few years than it has in its early years, it can be more accessible for everyone. 10 seconds remaining. Held at any time, uh, and with regards to the getting up at eight in the morning, I do a lot of unpleasant things for my job at eight in the morning anyway. This is not that time. Okay, time in favor of the motion has elapsed. Is there anybody wishing to speak against? Linda? We have 16 seconds remaining okay. against. We have 16 seconds of time remaining. There are all things we want to do during a world con, and we have to choose when we're going to do what. We have to make sacrifices. I do not want to see a meeting that starts at 5 o'clock and runs through 10 o'clock at night. I think at 10 o'clock in the morning, start between 10 and 1 is perfectly equitable for a business meeting. Thank you. Okay. And that was Linda Denneroff. And time in um, against, that's the word, has expired. So um, the time for debate has expired. Um, is there anyone wishing to uh, make a non debatable motion? Just want to make sure that we're good. Okay, so we will go ahead and move to a vote. All those in favor of C.2 strike 1.4, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Okay, yeah, no, I, I, knew, I knew that by the time we did the first half of the vote, y'all. Okay. Don't forget the table. No, I'm aware. Okay, so here's the thing. We are going to move to a counted vote. Um, so that's probably gonna delay the lunch break by like a little bit, but not a lot, um, hopefully. Um, and so our floor manager is going to quickly explain to you all how we do counted votes. All right. So. The chairperson is first going to call for the yeas. Everybody who agrees with it will stand up and we'll count off in order. And when we get to the end, we'll serpentine around, hence the name, and count them all. Then we'll do the same for the nays. Uh, if, uh, no, all, all across through the aisle. Okay. So. Uh, is, yep. Okay, so this is a majority vote um, because it's simply to, in, to pass the standing rule change, which is a majority vote. To clarify, if you're not, uh, not able to stand, you, will, you can raise the card. Um, and the floor manager will point at you to sit down as you count and will be the person to make sure that like, we don't miss numbers. Um, okay, are there any other questions about how we will conduct the vote? Um, I'm sorry, one brief question. Uh, one moment, I recognized Alan. Yep. Thank you. Members, do you have a question? Yeah, question about the vote. Uh, members, there's at least one member who can't get here because of physical accessibility reasons. They are not allowed to vote if not in the room, correct? The question was about people who are not in the room, and correct. Only people who are in the room are allowed to vote. Thank you. Uh, we do not have proxies or remote participation. That's not what we're doing right now. 
Um, okay, are there any other questions about the counted vote for C.2? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor, please rise. Okay. One, two, three. We're gonna do the tech. 10, 10, 11, Is there anybody wishing to vote in favor who was not counted? Okay, all those opposed, please rise. Is there anybody wishing to speak or vote against who is not counted? Okay, by a vote of 49 to 39, the motion passes and C.2 is adopted. Um, and we are in a, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, it has been moved by, by Jack Foy, um, who will bring his name badge up to the front for the secretary uh, for immediate adoption. Is there a second? There is a second. Uh, this requires a two-thirds vote. Um, it is not debatable. Um, all those uh, in favor of adopting C.2 immediately, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, that is not a two-thirds vote. C.2 is not adopted immediately. We are in a 42-minute recess until 1 p.m. Uh, for lunch. Uh, you can go pick up your box lunches if you pre-ordered those and we will start back up with C.3 at 1 p.m.
folks on the tech side to uh, get us back up and running and let us know when we're good. I see the captioning's up. Um, okay, we're good. Okay, we have one minute until we are reconvening and I will expect everybody to be properly in order in one minute. Okay, it is 1 p.m. and I'm gonna call us back into order. Okay, before we get started, a couple announcements. Um, so for the Mark Protection Committee nominations, um, so for folks who were not in the room, um, or sorry, rephrasing. Uh, so it is allowed for people to um, vote for write-in names. Um, but people do still need to consent to nomination in that case. So, like I said earlier, if you are consenting to nomination, um, you need to email business meeting at by 5 p.m. today. So if anybody is planning on having people write their name in as a write-in candidate, please do still make sure to consent to nomination. Um, that does not mean that your name will appear on the ballot as only those nominated will appear on the ballot. However, it does mean that those counting the votes will know that votes for you count um, as a write-in uh, nominee. In addition, um, because we have eight nominees for mark protection slots and three slots to vote for, um, we know that not everybody knows everybody. Um, in the convention discord, there is a business meeting channel. And so we are encouraging um, nominees for the Mark Protection Committee to uh, make a brief statement or, I mean, look, the discord isn't subject to time constraints. You can make a longer statement if you want um, about themselves, why you would like to be on the Mark Protection Committee, just a you know brief informational statement about yourself um, there. Um, when you do so, please at um, Emily January, um, who's one of the Discord mods, and that way we can make sure that the post get post or or at Gail, um, and that way we can make sure the post gets pinned so that it is very easily accessible to um, folks who are looking for it. And so, therefore, I would encourage all of you to check out the Discord. Um, later today to see those. We will also put something on the ballots, making sure that people are aware of that so that they can check that out when they see the ballots. Yes, I see a question. So I am going to ask the body, generally speaking, I am aware of the accessibility needs of microphones. Also, part of my job of the presiding officer is to guide you all, and sometimes people have a very brief question that I can restate, or I just need to hear briefly what they're trying to do before I need to tell them to move to a microphone. So please let the head table do our jobs, and don't try to do our jobs for us. We will make sure that the meeting is conducted, is conducted in an accessible manner. Thank you. Okay, so the question is if there will be a way for you to vote today. So according to our rules, the balloting for the Mark Protection Committee happens at a main business meeting, and we have set that for tomorrow. Um, yeah, nope, I'm aware. Um, sorry, I meant I'm aware of the why that's an issue. Thank you for explaining for folks who um, are not. Um, I'm going to ask people in the room um, who are, have served on head table previously and have probably dealt with this issue because I'm sure we've dealt with it before, but I don't remember how to, we've not dealt with it before? No memory of it, okay. I'm going to say that when we take our 2 p.m. break, I'm going to discuss with people the best option and get an answer to you. I don't think I'm gonna be able to answer that question now in a helpful manner on short notice. But yeah, no, thank you for the question. 
we will come up with a hopefully solution. Yes. Kind of information. There is a request for information. Okay. If you are somebody who is having issues getting access to the Discord, um, email online convention help at glasgow2024.org. There are dashes online dash convention dash help at glasgow2024.org can help you out with getting access to the Discord if you are having problems. Okay. Are there any other questions about the MPC stuff or any other requests for information? Okay, seeing none, we are going to turn to C.3, which has a title. No, we don't like surprises, why do you ask? Which I'm probably just gonna call surprises from here on out. Uh, on page 12, um, is Mr. Eastlake here for a point of order? I'm Mick Sherman. The, uh, Who are you? Uh, Donald East Lake, he, him. Uh, the, the Constitution has a clear provision that permits the uh, presiding officer to admit new business, uh, but it has to be put at the end of the agenda. And uh, that uh, there's a provision in the Constitution that that can be overruled by a two-thirds vote in any particular instance, but uh, it's out of order to adopt a standing rule that nullifies that part of the Constitution. Okay. So the point of order um, is basically that this is unconstitutional. Um, so my instinct is that I'm going to take a brief standing pause to confer with my uh, staff is what I'm going to do. <laughs> this, to be clear, is not a recess. It's a brief standing pause. You want to turn off your mic? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, my hot, okay, there we go. Okay, so as a reminder, the point of order was that C.3 is unconstitutional because it conflicts with uh, 5.1.6 of the Constitution um, that authorizes the presiding officer to allow new business. Um, I'm going to uh, rule that the point of order is well taken. Um, the issue is that, so as written, the, because the um, C.3 is specifically saying that we, that no business brought up without prior notice on, is allowed on the final scheduled day of the business meeting, that that does conflict with the presiding officer's ability to allow things as stated in the Constitution, if something were brought up on the last day. Um, the rest of the motion, the I do not believe the timing issues would be unconstitutional. Um, so the standing rule change is out of order as it conflicts with the Constitution, um, which I'm gonna keep talking and I think I might answer the question you're about to ask and then we'll get to you if I didn't. Um, 
So I'm ruling it out of order, which means that um, the, the motion is no longer before us because it is not in order. I will remind the body that um, late submission, quote unquote, of items is allowed and that if people wished to tackle this issue and submit a new version of it to be considered at this meeting, that it is likely, though not promised, that the presiding officer might allow such a thing and that by a two-thirds vote, the body can always a, override my, de my decision to allow something or not to allow it, and also, as stated in 5.1.6, new business, um, or late quote-unquote business, comes at the end of the agenda. However, also by a two-thirds vote, the body can choose to take something up earlier. So, did that answer the question you were going to ask? No, okay, then I will recognize Cliff Dunn. Next chair, Cliff Dunn, he, him. Um, without wanting to get into a bar brawl on an appeal of the chair quite this quickly, um, would you be open to a resubmission with the offending line uh, removed right now? Just, you know, you, you got the text of the whole thing, so. You're more making a friendly amendment. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm going to ask the body, is there any objection to a resubmission of this same item striking Cliff? You, you're, you're more familiar th with this than I am, since it's yours. Which line are you wanting to strike? The one that Don really, really didn't like. Okay, which is? <laughs> I believe that is the uh, no business may be brought up under this section on the Thank final you. day of the business meeting. Yeah. I believe that is the offending section. Okay. Is there any objection from the body to a sort of immediate resubmission of this item of business with the line no business may be brought up under this section on the final scheduled day of the business meeting struck? Objection. There is an objection. Okay. I would like to move to suspend the rules and introduce. Okay, the motion has been made to suspend the rules to basically, which has been seconded. The motion to suspend the rules is neither debatable nor amendable, but I'm gonna be clear on what's happening. So we have rules about when things can be submitted, how they can be submitted, and when we take them up if they're not submitted at the proper time. Technically, this is not a thing that was submitted previously since we've changed it a little bit or are trying to change it a little bit. So it's going to require us to do a suspension of the rules in order to make sure that the body is not being um, led on a course that it does not want to go on. So a t if you vote in favor of the motion to spend the rules, what you are voting in favor of, should the motion pass, is that we will um, immediately take up a new version of C.3 that strikes no business may be brought up under this section on the final scheduled day of the business meeting and that should the motion pass then that would be properly before us um, and we would proceed. If you are voting, if you vote against, if the motion fails, then um, the resubmitted version of C.3 um, would not be properly before us. Um, and. Different things may happen at that point, but at least at the end of the vote, that is where things would stand. Um, yes. <laughs> so that that is that. I I think you mean request for information, since that's not a thing in Robert's rules. Okay, yeah, so the question is, could it still be brought up as new business if the motion to suspend the rules does not pass? Um, if the motion to suspend the rules to basically do all of this now does not pass, the makers could still choose to resubmit under essentially the normal process for late business, at which point I, as the presiding officer, get to choose whether or not I allow it, and whatever I choose, you all, by a two-thirds vote, can disagree with me, which is sort of what we're doing now, except it's the objection, not me, that we're disagreeing with, possibly. Um, there's a lot of two-thirds votes involved. Did that answer your question? 
Yes. Was there another inquiry? Okay. So, I, okay, Elizabeth, is it for, do you have a request for information? Or, okay. Okay, so the question is, how do you offer a substitute amendment? The motion to suspend the rules, which is what we are currently on, is not debatable or amendable. If the motion to suspend the rules passes and C.3, as revised, is before us, then it would be in order to do things like amending. Currently, on the motion to suspend, amendments are not in order because we're not on the main motion currently. So... Are you, sorry, are you asking about amending C.3 no. or amending a different thing? Can I amend when you can make amendments on an item when we get to that item. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay. So the question that is currently before us is the motion to suspend the rules in order to take up the revised version of C.3 immediately. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? I do not believe that is a two-thirds vote. And so the, mo and so the motion fails. Is there anyone wishing to speak? Okay, hearing none. Or, oh, Joshua. Joshua Cronengold, he, him. I challenge them, um, the ruling from the chair. Uh, All right, so I believe, to be clear, you're appealing the ruling that it was out of order, not my vote I count. Am, yes, I am appealing the ruling that, it, that, a motion, that, a, um, that a motion on the agenda that is out of order is therefore not before us and cannot be amended. Okay so, okay, so you're not appealing the, that it was unconstitutional, but that after I ruled it unconstitutional, it's no longer before us? Yes, correct. Okay. So the ruling of the chair has been appealed. One moment. Okay, um, so what was appealed was my ruling that since I ruled that the standing rule change was unconstitutional, that the item is now no longer before us. There is a provision in Robert's Rules of Order that you cannot appeal the ruling of the chair when such a ruling is about something about which it is not reasonable for there to be two different opinions. It is not possible under Robert's Rules of Order for something that is out of order to be before us. My ruling was that the standing rule change was out of order and therefore <laughs> I'm ruling that it is, it is not an appealable decision because it is a fundamental principle of how we conduct our business that something that is out of order is not properly before us and cannot be debated or taken up. I will just remind you all, it's not, if you all do that when we're on something where there's debate times, when you clap, it does count against the debate time, just FYI. Since you did it, I will remind you of that. Okay, so, that is, I believe, is there anybody wishing to speak or make a motion about the current situation we're in? Seeing none, we are going to move to C.4. And this is where 
before Kate stands up, I, you will notice, am listed as the proposer of this. So I am going to vacate my chair and become one of y'all for a little bit, and Warren's going to take over. Good afternoon. <laughs> it, is on. it is on, yes, I'm sorry. That wasn't uh, a, a, a big statement. Uh, let's see. So typically, we would begin with recognizing a speech for from the maker of the motion. Okay, I was saying typically we would begin by recognizing a speech in favor from the maker of the motion. Is there a privileged motion? Oh, okay. Uh, does anyone object to me saying debate time at 10 minutes? No, okay. Is there a privileged motion you would like to make? All right. I, I'm not certain that's privileged. Let's check uh, that. It, it's a motion to postpone until a specific. It should be that is not a privileged motion. So we have to debate president. That's, that's what you, said. you can make the motion. It just doesn't give you pre precedence oh, okay. in debate. Uh, Jesse Lip, they, them, um, for the sake of not wasting the body's time. Uh, I am fine with taking up a motion to postpone definitely before we get into it and would actually prefer that we do that, please. All right. My name is Kate Secor. I use he, her pronouns. Mr. Chair, I would request that we postpone consideration of this motion until after consideration of, I think it's D.9, uh, the one that creates the business meeting study committee. motion is before us. It has been seconded. This is debatable. Uh, what do we have? Four minutes on something like this? Usually we do five. But we usually we do five for procedural. Five but it's like, like with amendments. Well, we, the rule, we do five minutes for amendments. Okay, so. so weird. Okay, so we're going to have five minutes. Of, we're going to have five minutes of debate time on, on this issue. Uh, Two and a half in favor, two and a half against. Request for information. What, what is the request for information? Is there a way to find out or speculate or ask when D.9 would be on a calendar? No. Cool. Thanks. Okay. Appreciate it. The, the question was, do we have a way to figure out when D.9 would be on the calendar? And uh, the answer is no without D.9 having been itself uh, made a, a special order for a certain time. And you had another? Yes. If D.9 fails to make the, like it gets postponed indefinitely, what happens to this thing? After D.9 was postponed indefinitely, then this would be available for consideration if it had been postponed until after D.9. I'd like to point out for those of you who are on the Discord that we are live reporting. So if you're interested in a specific thing and you can't be here all the time, watch the Discord business meeting channel. We will say, hey, we're going to come up on this now. OK, so we are now at debate time as the maker of the motion. Uh, I, I believe, Kate, you would have the floor. So. C.4 proposes to change uh, a couple different things about ways the meeting is run and structured. And I think that if we're going to have a whole committee to talk about how the meeting is run and structured, we should maybe take this up after we've decided whether we want that committee, since if we do seat that committee, this seems like the sort of thing we would want to refer to them. There's a speech in favor of postponement. Do we have a speech against postponement? Uh, the chair recognizes Jesse Lip. Jesse Lip, they, them. Um, not wanting to speak for people that I'm not, I will note that among the proposers of C.4 are listed those that proposed D.9, by which I mean that 
obviously, the, all of these items are in the hands of the body. They're, they don't belong to proposers anymore. But I would note that the proposers of the resolution to form the business meeting study group committee are also proposers of, of C.4 repeal 7.9. The proposers of the resolution to form the committee would like us, are, are in favor of still repealing 7.9 at this meeting. Um, and so I'm of the opinion that we should not refer 7.9 to committee and therefore or repeal 7.9 committee and therefore there is no need to wait to take this item up after the committee has been formed. That was a speech against the postponement of the item. Do we have a speech for the postponement of the item? Seeing none, is there anyone who wishes to speak to this issue still? Uh, I guess the, the chair will recognize you first. We have one minute and 37 seconds remaining against. Uh, Perry and Lurie, she, her. Uh, if we repeal 7.9, that, that removes a tie on the hands of the committee we might refer things to. It doesn't make things happen, it just prevents, it doesn't prevent things from happening. So I'm, a, I'm in favor of voting on it now. Thank you again. That was a speech against postponement. Do we have any additional speeches in favor of postponement? Yes. Uh, Cliff Dunn, he, him. Uh, I'm not quite sure how this would uh, tie, the, remove a tie on the committee's hands. The fact of the matter is the committee would be free to propose something substantially similar to 7.9. And the proposals would only require a single year for adoption. It's not like we're snarling a constitutional amendment here. Okay, that was a speech, speech in favor of postponement. Do we have speeches against postponement? Uh, okay, over here. This uh, proposal uh, to uh, repeal the standing, uh, Alan Bond, uh, they, them, um, this proposal to, is to repeal a standing, uh, standing rule that was proposed at the business meeting in Chengdu that was not on the agenda, and it was felt that that was done in an untimely fashion, and that is why we should be considering it now in the standing rules in the agenda that has been done in a timely fashion. Explain that again, please. Uh, uh, the, the member, uh, would, that was not in order. Okay, so that was a, a speech against postponement. Do we have any speeches in favor of postponement? Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? We have 58 seconds remaining for speech against postponement. Yes, this is against postponement. Farah Mendelssohn, I prefer just Farah. I'm one of the proposers of both of the motions. Essentially, if this, is po if this is considered now, it can have a significant effect on who may get to vote on the committee report. Thank you. <coughs> that was a speech against postponement. Do we have any other speeches in favor of postponement? Is there anyone else still wishing to speak? Yes. Uh, could you run the microphone? Gail Terman, she, they, as someone who literally looked at the business meeting agenda, made sure my panels were unlikely to be over this and would really like to speak to it and uh, probably can't if it's later, I would really like if we didn't postpone it. So we have 32 seconds remaining against postponement and a minute 58 remaining for postponement. Are there any other speeches for postponement? All right. Elizabeth Kovar, she, her. Um, I do understand that doing this now would allow other people to vote on the meeting about how to arrange meetings. Um, however, I think we should stick with the way we're doing it until that has been decided, um, rather than changing everything now. Change it, wait for the change, keep things as they are. Once that committee has figured things out, 
then we do that part. I don't think we should change all of it at once. Uh, all right, that was a speech for. Are there any other speeches against postponement? Seeing none, the question before the assembly is postponement of item C4, repeal 7.9. Uh, those in favor of postponement, please raise your hand. Those against postponement, please raise your hand. I believe the negative has it. We will now return to the main motion. Uh, the, the chair will recognize the speech from the maker of the motion. This is a speech in favor. Yes. I'm in favor of my motion. Uh, Jesse Lip, they, them. Um, as has been noted, um, 7.9 was in addition to the standing rules that was made at Chengdu um, that was not published in the agenda uh, prior to the business meeting. It was a late submission. Um, and therefore, there were people who wished to speak on it and were not able to. Um, it was not done improperly, but that's it was, it was not done in a way that uh, people knew that it was coming up. Um, repealing 7.9 returns our standing rules to what they were one year ago um, and doesn't uh, force any committee to do anything. It does enable committees to choose to do things. We have a system that privileges people who are able to attend three or five hour meetings who can afford to do so and who would rather be here or are more willing to be here than doing all of the other stuff at a world con and i don't think that's fair and i think that we need to be able to run our meetings in other ways and that includes things like online participation and that includes things possibly like proxies and it is in my opinion completely ridiculous to bind the ability of the committee and the business meeting staff to enfranchise more people That was a speech for the proposal. Are there any speeches against the proposal? All right, I recognize you. Uh, John Pomeranz, he, him. I am very sympathetic to the makers of this proposal and respect all of them, but I speak against it because I believe that although this addition to the standing rules was done in a way that was, if not, improper, at least problematic, it makes a good point. I firmly believe that the way WISFIS is governed needs to be changed. And some of those changes should enable people who aren't able or willing to participate in these marathon business meetings to be participants in the governance of the World Science Fiction Society. But I think in particular that proxy voting is a terrible idea. And while this does not mandate in any way proxy voting and merely allows the possibility, the idea that somehow this body is capable of maintaining a voting list and keeping a, a reasonable control on who actually exercises proxies on behalf of other WISFIS members is, I think, beyond the capacity of the organization as it exists currently. I will support and would join in any committee interested in, um, in developing new plans to develop um, some form of representational government where an ongoing body can take care of the organization, uh, where we can create online voting for the representatives or a board of such a body and take other actions to include people who are excluded by the way we currently govern ourselves. But this motion, I believe, should be defeated. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, John. John. Oh, my bad. <laughs> All right, that was a speech against the motion. Is there a speech in favor of the motion? Yes. Uh, does the member rise for a privileged motion? No. Gail Terman, she they. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, sorry, I forgot your pronouns. Yes. This is Donna, Jesse. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, <laughs> I. <laughs> <laughs> They're similar. <laughs> um, 
I mean, if you don't object, mixed chair. Um, so uh, I feel pretty strongly about this. I know there's a lot of concern about, but what if we do something stupid? And but this stupid thing happened in the past. And I think that the problem with 7.9 as it's written now is it means that we, while we are protected from doing stupid things, it means we're also protected from doing anything. Um, and uh, I'm not in favor of like, the problems of how do we do this fairly and how do we uh, make sure that there aren't like incidents in the past of ballot stuffing and multiple people being really one person and that stuff. That's like a who knows how to do security around elections problem and that should be like a technical committee coming up with that, not a bunch of people in a room who have opinions. I mean, maybe also that, but I, you know, there's proposals that can come from knowledgeable people in this area, of which I'm sure we have many. I think that keeping this rule on the books means that if that committee were to get together, form a plan, and want to execute it for Seattle, they couldn't because we can only repeal this once a year. And I really, because this is disenfranchising so many people, including like if I had a bad pain day, whoops, can't vote. Like, sorry. Uh, but like, th this is, if you live in Africa, you basically, like we had people coming from Africa to Shikon and they couldn't get in the country because they couldn't get a visa and they had money and privilege and participation and whatever, but like they, this is really disenfranchising whole continents and how can we call ourselves the World Science Fiction Convention and the world, whatever their name is for this group, which I can't remember off the top of my head. World Science Society, if like a whole quarter of the world can't participate. So, uh, I think that this rule in particular, while it does stop things we don't like, really affects things that we do like and should strive for. And as Jesse pointed out, removing this rule does not mean we will do it. It just means that if we figure out how to do it in a way that we like, we can do it for next year and not for like some point in the future. Thank you. Uh, that was a speech in favor of the proposal. Do we have another speech against? Uh, I believe Mr. Don was up first. How much time? Uh, there is one minute, three seconds, four, and three minutes, 15 seconds against. Remaining? Remaining. Yeah. Cliff Dunn, he, him. Funny thing, Seattle has explicitly stated they intend to run an all-virtual meeting. So this, the argumentation that, oh, they might not is not in line with reality. That's the first thing. Second thing, look, if they had come to us already with, here is our platform, here is you know, our plan, here, we've load tested it, et cetera, then yes, we would probably be supporting this amendment. Kate Secor has spent years trying to work out a way to make virtual Mr. meetings Dunn. work. Mr. Dunn. Speech that names another member of the body is not in order. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Many of a number of my colleagues have have spent years trying to make virtual meetings work, but the, but we don't trust the infrastructure. And Seattle's just gone and said, "Oh, we're going to do this before we even have the rule passed." So you know, look. First of all, the arguments in favor are dubious in that respect. Second of all, look at what we had with the tech today. What happens, you know, I, th I don't think it's unreasonable to say what happens if the tech craps out next year or several of the hotel's Wi-Fi goes down. Thirdly, because they're holding the virtual meeting during the convention, they're, they're going to drag a whole bunch of people back up into their hotel rooms during the convention. The meeting will probably run even longer. Virtual meetings have a habit of expanding time, not saving it, in my experience. So this, this is going to make this is going to make a messy experience for everybody at Seattle. Look. We will get there in the next couple of years. I have very little doubt about that, but we're not there yet. So this should remain in place. Uh, I believe I still have the floor. Is that, is Please stop the clock. Unless it's a question of privilege, then it's not in Okay. You can ask. You can raise a point of order that his debate is not germane. After he's done. You can no, raise it. It is timely. Right. It is timely now. If you want to raise it. Okay, I'd like to raise a point of order. I do not feel that this debate is germane. It is not talking about the repealing the rule. It's talking about Seattle. The member raised a point of order that the debate raised by that the debate made by Mr. Dunn was not germane because it was discussing Seattle rather than the rule in question. The rule in question directly. Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, that's debate. I'm. I'm. I'm restating it. 
So in, in the opinion of the chair, it is germane because this is a debate about the consequences of passing the motion. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now, as I said, we will get there, but we're not there yet. And trusting Seattle to work it out and not have a major tech failure is a bit of a bridge too far, especially after what we saw this morning. Um, so I would encourage this to be ultimately put to the business meeting study committee and we'll come back to it next year. We might have it in place by LA Con. Thank you. Mr. Dunn. All right, that was a speech against. There is one minute three remaining for speeches four. There is one minute 19 remaining for speeches against. Do we have any speeches four? Okay, we have several. Um, let's see. Let's go with Mr. Oaks. Perhaps could we run a microphone to him given the number of cables he has to step on? Oh, that's right. Ron Oaks, he, him. I will just point out again, as has been pointed out a few other times, repealing this section will simply return the standing rules to the status quo antium that was in place as of ShyCon 8 and all prior world cons. It does not explicitly allow for either proxy or remote voting. It just restores the standing rules to their prior state. All of the other debate has been not necessarily, well, I'm going off topic. It restores the status quo antium to where it was two years ago. Thank you. That was a speech in favor. There are two minutes, 20, or sorry, there's 24 seconds remaining in favor, one minute, 19 against. Uh, point of inquiry? Yes, point of inquiry. What was the status before this thing was done? I always thought we could not do proxy or electronic of the business meeting. So. Okay, yes, so the status before uh, was that the, the sorry, the, the, the question was what was the status quo ante? Uh, and the status before was that there was not a standing rule addressing whether electronic meetings were permissible. Uh, it is addressed to a certain degree in the Constitution, but I don't believe fully by, I believe it's 6.4? 6.3. Uh, which says that nothing in this rule should be interpreted to permit an electronic meeting. However, that doesn't fully address the question. It just says that that particular rule doesn't permit it. Uh, my interpretation of the Constitution would be that the other section of the Constitution, which allows the Worldcon to set rules for the business meeting, which are at a higher priority than Robert's Rules of Order newly revised, uh, would allow for the Worldcon to set rules that allowed an electronic business meeting. Uh, for what purpose does the member rise? Right. Okay. So okay. use the microphone. Uh, Actually, can, can we have a pause so I can type? Just a second, sorry. <laughs> you guys are talking really fast, and this is all really good stuff. But. Wait for a second. Yeah. And, uh, you can't Okay. So, based on the chair's interpretation, uh, Chris Hensley, he, him, based on the current, based on the interpretation of the Constitution, as just laid out by the chair, does the chair believe that this is a permissible item before the body, or that it inherently, that 79 itself is permissible? Uh, it was is it not the before the body whether 7-9 itself is permissible. Okay. Uh, that was a question for last year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is one other member. Uh, is this another privileged motion or are we back to speech? <laughs> there are 20, 24 seconds for and a minute 19 against remaining. Marie Rudolph. Um, after, and this is, speaks to what you had stated. 
I did do some investigation and essentially speaking about the status before this was passed, that uh, since the business rule did not address it, that it went down to Robert's Rules of Order. Robert does state that um, virtual attendance can be done, but that rules and processes must be well defined before it is allowed, as was previously stated. Um, yes, by this, this is debate. Uh, I, I, yes, but the rules have to be, and processes have to be developed, not just saying, yes, uh, we're going to allow it. That there have to be defined processes in place. Okay, uh, that appeared to be a speech against. Uh, pl please pause a moment for the timekeeper to catch up with that. That it's it's the chair. No, it's the chair's interpretation that was a speech against passage. Uh, that that was about. What, does somebody wish to appeal the ruling of the chair? Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, so we we have a we have a. Actually, you know what? I think it's bad. The parliament. Well, I'll motion to appeal the ruling of the chair. Okay, it's been moved. Uh, the parliamentarian will note that this, that appeal time comes out of t that time debating an appeal comes out of total debate time. The appeal has been seconded. I mean, it's a debatable appeal. Like, there's not, there's a debatable appeal. The parliamentarian would remind the body that time spent on debating appeals comes out of the total debate time for an item. I remove the motion. The motion was seconded. Are you? I, I'm not the chair. I can't do this. Is the member seeking unanimous consent to withdraw their appeal? <laughs> The chair had not yet stated the motion, and therefore it is in order for a member to withdraw it. All right, it was withdrawn by the member then. Uh, All right, There's Wait, call what vote? Debate time. <laughs> well, sorry. Did you withdraw your motion or just the previous member? Oh, I okay. There's no okay. So there, there is nothing before. Are you calling the question on C4? Uh, there is a motion to call the question on C4 Second. that has been seconded. Uh, that's actually correct. We don't have enough time yet to, for uh, time left for call the question. Uh, All right. We have um, 24 seconds left for. So that is repealing, and we have 31 seconds left against. All right. Is there anyone wishing to speak for the motion? Okay. Farah Mendelssohn, I prefer Farah. Just to note, um, I'm sure this meeting worked incredibly well in the past when Worldcom was smaller but I'm one of the con runners. I have spent this morning in order finding somebody a scooter, um, dealing with emergency services because we were concerned about a member of the convention and a whole load of other things. I can't get to these meetings. It's impossible. So we are creating... Time. Right. We have 31 seconds remaining against. Uh, that's a lot of you. <laughs> Okay. Kate Secor, she, her, I would like to point out that a virtual meeting cannot call quorum because quorum requires physical presence. So I don't think we should repeal a thing preventing virtual meetings until we've dealt with that other problem first. 20 seconds remain against. Is there another speech against? I believe I, I saw you first after I finished speaking. Jason Spitzer, he, him. Uh, briefly, against, I don't think we should repeal 7.9. I think it should be amended to retain control of who is eligible to move and second and vote, et cetera. 
uh, through WISFIS and through the business meeting, through the Constitution, but I think we should allow virtual participation, which would enfranchise those who can't make it physically. I understand others might be disenfranchised. Proxying we can deal with later, but I think we should allow virtual, but I don't think we should repeal this now. Time. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Was that a motion to amend? Uh, no. Not that it was okay. Not that, no. It was, it was a suggestion for future. Okay. No. Okay, it was not actually a motion to amend, it was a suggestion about amendment. All right, time has expired. For what purpose does the member rise? I would just mention non motion. What's the motion? Sorry, time out again. You, you just, can still walk. Yeah, you can still walk the mic. If but. it's a complicated motion, then tell us. Yeah. Uh, it's not super complicated, I also marked up my idea. Um, Wait for the yes. secretary. Yes. Please, please, please have mercy on, on me. Institution? What? Please start state your name and then start over. Thank you. Joshua Cronengold, he, him. Um, I move to amend C4 by substitution, replacing it in its entirety um, with striking and remote rem um, uh, rule 7.9 um, of uh, remo and remote from voting and physically uh -huh. with, other, with no other changes. Thus, Changing it to only remove um, to uh, prohibit proxy voting, but not, um, rem but not remote participation. Okay. What is the parliamentary inquiry? So the time for debate has elapsed. I don't think you can make the motion. It is. We have a standing rule that says he can. Okay. I, I, first, let's see. Let's see your write-up. But a, a yeah. motion to amend is in order, but it, it, with time expired, it is not debatable. Hold on, we're, we're not there yet. <laughs> okay, so if I understand correctly, this would strike through the words, the, the words and remote voting in the section title and the word physically in the sentence, only WISFIS members physically present at the business meeting shall be recognized for the purposes of debate or may move, second, or vote motions on the floor of the meeting. Proxy votion, voting is not permitted. Uh, that is, is there correct, Mr. Uh, Chairperson. Is there a second for the amendment? I see it has been seconded. There is no time for debate. Uh, there is a motion to extend debate time. Is there a second? How much? How much debate time would you like to extend by? Uh, seven. <laughs> the, the person who moved to extend, let's hear from them first. Uh, four minutes. Okay, the motion is to extend debate time by four minutes. Is that seconded? Second. Okay, that is seconded. All right, all those in favor of extending debate time by four minutes? All those opposed? The opposition has it. We are not extending debate time by four minutes. The question before, sorry, is there? I'm telling Josh just uh, The question before the assembly, yeah, you can, you can sit. Oh, okay. you, you want this back. Eventually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the question before the assembly is whether to amend the motion uh, to remove only those four words from section 7.9. All those in favor of the amendment. If it's not possible to get the text on the screen, could the chair please read the motion as it would read with the amendment in its entirety? Okay, so right now rule 7.9 reads, Rule 7.9, proxy and remote voting, only WISFIS members physically present at the business meeting shall be recognized for the purposes of debate or may move, second, or vote on motions on the floor of the meeting. Proxy voting is not permitted. If the amendment were passed, 
this proposal, which right now strikes that entire rule, would only strike the text and remote voting in the title and the word physically in the next sentence. And so it would make rule 7.9 read, proxy, only WSFUS members present at the business meeting shall be recognized for purposes of, deba of debate or may move, second, or vote on motions on the floor of the meeting. Um, proxy voting is not permitted. Water? Yes. Uh, I believe you misread my text. Uh, voting is also not permitted. Okay, proxy voting. Only WSFUS members physically, uh, only WSFUS members present at the business meeting shall be recognized for purposes of debate or may move, second, or vote on motions on the floor of the meeting. Proxy voting is not permitted. All right. Does everyone, is everyone? Right voting. Um, what? The first voting. The uh, this, can you pass me that? <laughs> Sorry, this isn't cabinet. Can you pass me something that has the amendment on it? So you would remove and remote, and you would remove physically. Those are the only words to be struck. No, no, no. It was good. I'm so lost on this motion. Um, okay, so. But with yes. voting. Okay. Mr. Cronengold, is this the motion as you, the amendment as you proposed it? Oh my gosh. Yes. We're still missing. We have an extra strike for voting. Sorry, we're not wearing glasses. I'm going to make it bigger when it's correct. Is yep. that what you is that what you proposed? Proxy voting. Yes. All right. So we are now going to make this as large as we can. I cannot edit it in slideshow. I, I cannot edit in slideshow mode. All right. Let me remind the body that there is no debate time on this. We are proceeding to a vote on amending the the standing rules motion to read this way. All those in favor of the amendment, please raise your hands. All those opposed to the amendment. Those opposed have it. All right, with no debate time remaining, we are now on the main motion. All those in favor of the main motion, please raise your hands. To strike the entire rule. Okay, all those opposed to striking the rule. I believe those in favor have it. There is a call for division. We will now proceed with a serpentine vote. Those in favor of the proposal, please stand or raise your card as appropriate. I lost my card, I'm sorry. Thank you. 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 All right, floor manager, do you think? All right. One, two, three, four, five. He, he was 10, right? 49, 40, 46, 47, 48, 49, Were you wishing to vote? No. Can you find a personal something or other? If I have to go leave to moderate a panel, would my vote still be counted because I'm not sure what the second part of the person means? Uh, you've already voted in favor, yes? Great, so I can go. Okay, so we have 49 in favor. Those opposed, please stand or raise your card as appropriate. Yes, yes those against. 
One. Two. 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 Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. The count is 49 in favor, 36 against. The motion passes. And now I believe, uh, I, I believe it's time for a 10 minute recess at which point Jesse will retake the chair. Uh, the 10 minute recess will end at 2.10.
apparently. This is your one minute warning. We're gonna reconvene in one minute. Okay, it's 2.10, I'm gonna ask the meeting to come to order. Please come to order and take your seats and stop conversations. Okay, having dealt with the standing rules changes, the next stuff on our agenda is the resolutions. Before we get to that though, um, so per the standing rules, um, the balloting for the Mark Protection Committee um, basically gets assigned to a main meeting um, it doesn't say which one. So um, as chair, um, my prerogative in agenda setting and yielding to the um, convention's uh, values of things like accessibility and inclusion, um, we are going to handle balloting for the Mark Protection Committee and any other committees that may require balloting uh, on Sunday. Thank you, Ms. Chair. Okay, so jumping into resolutions. Is there any objection yeah, like 10 of you have asked about this. So, uh, Judith, is this about the eligibility extensions? No. Okay. It is about your, your moving to Sunday. Would you please uh, find a way to inform other nominees that the vote has changed? Yep. Yeah. So, yep. So, the question was about making sure that folks are aware of the the time change. So for nominees, uh, they're not gonna get to do a like little song and dance before the balloting. So, but for people who are wanting to vote, whether they're nominees or not, we will make sure to uh, notify folks at the convention that that balloting will happen on Sunday. Um, okay, moving on to resolutions. Is there any objection to taking up D.1 through D.7, which is all of the Hugo eligibility extensions together? Okay, I hear um, an objection. Um, is there anyone wishing to make a motion to suspend the rules to take them all up together? Yes. So moved, I'm gonna pick Kevin as the mover for the minutes, because he was one of like 10. Kevin Stanley. Um, okay, so the motion to suspend the rules to take up D.1 through D.7 together has been made and seconded. It is neither debatable nor amendable, so we will move directly to a vote. This requires a two-thirds vote. To be clear, should this motion pass, we will take up all of all seven of those items together, um, and they will have one vote, and should there be any debate, one debate time. Um, that got weirdly like church voice there. Um, <laughs> if the motion should pass, or sorry, if the motion fails, then we will take up these items um, separately, one by one. Uh, what, what yes, the inquiry is if we take them all together, is it one vote up or down altogether? And the answer to that is yes. So, all those in favor of suspending the rules to take up D1 through D7 together, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Thank you. And the motion passes. And so we are going to take up items D1 through D7 all together. Is there an objection to a debate time of four minutes for these items? See none, debate time is set at four minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of these items? Okay. And Kevin Stanley, he, him. In my experience, this, this meeting has never rejected an eligibility extension. Why should we start changing that? <laughs> I will remind the body that time spent in laughter and applause does count against debate. Uh, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? While I am in favor, oh, Perry Ann, where is she, her? 
While I'm in favor of most of these, I do not believe that The Boy and the Heron or Godzilla Minus One had limited availability before the close of nominations and should not be extended. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there a speech in favor? Yes. The question is if a motion to amend would be in order, and it would be if I recognized you. Uh, and I'm recognizing the woman in the hat. <laughs> or sorry, the person in the hat. I should really know better. My apologies. Tilt it down, too. Linda Robinette, she, her, I found Godzilla Minus One unavailable to my viewing pleasure until June 1st of 2024 due to the fact I just don't go to theaters anymore. It wasn't available through the library. It, DVDs had ceased publication on Netflix. And I don't get HBO Max. So I consider that at least this one, I'm not familiar with the other ones, I believe the boy and his heron had pretty much the same problem. These were not as available until Netflix picked them up. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Thank you. I will recognize you, <laughs> even though you popped up before I was done which is why you didn't get recognized before. Uh, mixed chair, Cliff Dunn, he, him. I move to strike D3 and D4 from this motion. Second. Can I suggest that you rephrase that to be that you move, sorry, I guess, are you wanting to just strike the D3 and D4 eligibility extension entirely or are you wanting to vote on it separately? Okay, then may I suggest that you move to, mm, I think there's gonna be have to be suspend the rules. Divide the oh yeah, sorry, divide the question. Yep, you're right, thank you. Move to divide the question by moving D3 and D4 off on their own. Okay, so the motion to divide has been made. Um, because this is, the, this is a division of items that were not interdependent, it actually only takes a single member to wish to divide. So we're polling D3 and D4 and we will vote on them separately. So the item currently before us is D1, 2, 5, 6, and 7, right? It was D3 and D4 that we polled. Boy and Godzilla, right? Okay, cool. So currently before us is D1, 2, 4, five, sorry, D1, 2, 5, 6, and 7. Um, there is a point of order, possibly inquiry. Uh, yes, I just wanted to clarify with you guys voting on three and four separately from one another or together as well. Uh, I, I, I'm going to take this as voting. The question was, was the division separating three and four as a unit or as separate things? I'm going to take them as being separate so that we don't do this again. Um, <laughs> so currently before us is D1, 2, 5, 6, and 7. Um, is there a speech against? There's a point of order, state your point. Move to call the question. That's not a point of order, that's moving to call the question. Uh, okay. However, I still would have recognized you because there wasn't anybody else wishing to speak. Is there anybody else wishing to speak? There is, okay. So the motion to call the question has been moved and seconded. There is one person still wishing to speak. No, I'm not. You're, not you're not, okay. Is there anybody else wishing to speak? Last call. Seeing none. We are going to move to a vote. We don't need to vote on calling the question if there's nobody wishing to debate. So the item before us is D1, 2, 5, 6, and 7. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. And those pass. I am going to move us now to D.3. Is there an objection to two total minutes of debate time for this item? Hearing none, debate is set at two minutes. Is there a speech in favor? Seeing none, is there a speech against? The item currently before us is D.3, which is the Hugo eligibility extension for Kimitacha Wado Ikiru Ka 
AKA, I'm sure that was terrible, my apologies, AKA the boy and the heron, um, which we said a total debate time for two minutes. Mr. Dunn. Yeah, mixed chair, I, Cliff Dunn, he, him. Uh, traditionally, these eligibility extensions have been used for situations where a book was either an exceedingly slim release or more often that a movie only saw either a Oscar technical release in two or three theaters or a uh, festival release. Both of these movies, The Boy and the Heron and Godzilla Minus One, were in wide release. They topped the box office in December. This is not in line with what we traditionally extend for. So to Mr. Stanley's, uh, to my colleague's question from earlier, this is a perfectly good time to, for our first time to reject an extension because they were in broad release. Hundreds of thousands of people saw them. I understand that not everybody could get to, get to the theaters, but that's always been the case. Somebody is always not gonna be able to get to uh, see a movie. If we're going to extend these, we might as well just roll the extension deadline, you know, the deadline back and let everything have a second year of extension uh, eligible at this point. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, is there anyone wishing to speak against or on another matter? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. The item before us is D.3, the Hugo eligibility extension for the boy and the heron. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, I'm gonna say the motion fails. Okay. The next item before us is D.4, the Hugo eligibility extension for Gojira 1.0, AKA Godzilla minus one. Oh, it's probably a minus, not a dash, given the English. Uh, does anybody object to a debate time of two minutes for this item? Hearing none, debate time is set for two minutes. Is there a speech in favor? Seeing none, is there a speech against? Next chair, Cliff Dunn. He, him. I will be extraordinarily brief. This is one of my favorite movies in years, if not in my lifetime. It was amazing, but it was in broad release and it should not get a release ex a, an eligibility extension. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor? I'm sorry, is there, for what purpose? Yeah, and I recognize the hand over there. Mark Roth, uh, it was in wide release, only in certain selected theaters, only in certain areas, and the rest of us couldn't get to it. It was not, a fa for, for all realistic purposes, it was not available for everybody. Right. That was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Okay. Is there anybody else still wishing to speak in favor? What's our time? We have 44 seconds left in favor. Thank you. Plenty of time left in the radio. <laughs> Chris Barkley. Chris Barkley. He, him. Uh, yes, it, uh, Godzilla minus one wizard wide release, however, it was withdrawn by the studio because of an, another impending Godzilla movie. So, and I didn't even get to see it until it, it appeared on Netflix by surprise. So I am in favor of extending the uh, eligibility of this film. Thank you. Okay, that was the speech in favor. Is there anyone still wishing to speak against? Wait, I need your bag, please. Bad now. Okay, I'll okay. recognize you for a speech okay, against. Where are we on? Time. We have 22 seconds. Okay. Is this a speech against? This is a speech against, correct? All right. Speech against, we have 49 seconds. Okay. Uh, Seth Breidbart, he, him. Uh, according to the box office numbers, uh, Godzilla Minus One had 115 million in box office by the end of December 2023. That was a speak. That was a speech. The members out of order, both of them. That was a speech against. Is there a speech in favor? Money doesn't always. Who are you? 
Elspeth Kovar. Say it into the mic, though, please. Elspeth Kovar, she, her, money doesn't always equate, equate viewers. It can be a limited release with a high, high price. And that was one of the best reviews I've ever heard. And I want to see this movie. And I never Five had seconds. a chance. So going back to what somebody said, great box Time. Office. Okay. Time has elapsed in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Seen done. And because time has elapsed in favor, we will move to a vote. The item before us is D.4, the Hugo eligibility extension for Godzilla minus one. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? I'm going to say the ayes have it. And D.4 passes. Okay. The next item before us is D.8, the MPC funding request on page, well, I'm gonna say 16. 16, thank you. Sorry, I should, meant to say this earlier. Um, we have, we are aware of a slight issue where some of the numbers in the table of contents are off by like one. Um, that probably happened due to a pagination thing. So I'm trying to give you the number that it actually says on the page that it's on. Um, if I give you the number that it says on the table of contents, it should be within one page of that. So apologies for that confusion. So the item before us is D.8, which is on page 16, the MPC funding request. Um, is a member of the MPC, that, which is who submitted it here, who would like to speak in favor? Right. Oh, yep, thank you, sorry. Um, is there any objection to a debate time of four minutes for this item? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Donald Eastlake, he, him. Uh, I'm currently the chair of the Mark Protection Committee. Uh, I believe the discussion text on the bottom of page 16 and the top of page 17 in your agenda gives a pretty good explanation. This is really just a request uh, for what the reasonable level of the voluntary contribution uh, to the MPC would be from Worldcons and uh, NASFIX. So uh, as a <laughs> the uh, chair of the MPC and uh, believing that we do good work in registration and uh, so forth, uh, maintaining the Hugo Awards website and so on, uh, I encourage people to vote in favor of this. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? In the back. Oh, there we go. Martin Easterbrook, he, him. Um, for non-US conventions, it's much more probable that there will be a loss at the end of convention or a very small profit. Uh, making the amount paid dependent on the number of members runs the risk of pushing a profit convention into a loss and that confers a lot of extra legal fees and possible penalties. Could this motion be amended so that the amount paid to the MPC is a portion of the profit of the convention? Is that an amendment or is that a question about if an amendment is possible? Okay. It is possible for the body to decide to amend it if they chose to do so. I hear a point of order. May I have a motion to amend? Uh, a motion to amend would be in order, however, not when you have been recognized for a point of order. No, that's fine. That's just a question. Yeah. That's okay. okay. So that was a speech against. Wait, sorry, wait, sorry. Yes. Uh, does this motion okay. It's not the body's job to answer parliamentary inquiries, but thank you for helping. Um, the parliamentary inquire was whether the motion requires anything, and it does not. Resolutions are non-binding. They are suggestions, requests, pleas, whatever we want to call them. It, it, it is not binding. I will also note that in the um, discussion text, um, the MPC does also clarify that they do not normally um, ask conventions to pay any money until um, after the convention has concluded, um, since that's also sort of what we're discussing here. 
Okay, so are, are there any other privileged motions or questions that people are wanting to bring up? Okay, so that was a speech. A motion to amend is not privileged. That was a speech against that we had and then some other stuff. Is there a speech in favor? Kevin Stanley, he, him. Noting that in fact, we, as mentioned before, I want, we want to make this clear. I'm also a member of the NPC. We don't demand money of Worldcons. We cannot demand money of Worldcons. There is no right of the MPC to demand money. We depend upon the generosity of Worldcon committees to keep us running to protect the service marks that they use. The last time that we made, that I recall, that we made such a request was a approximately 30 plus years ago, 84 is when I remember it. It may have been longer, it may have been longer or shorter. And with that time we passed a number having to do with how uh, an amount per site selection vote. Amount per site selection vote is much more variable than the number of members. It should be much easier to budget for a potential below the line post-convention donation having to do with the cost per WSFIS member that you don't actually have to pay if you don't want to do it, but we'd really like it if you could. But we certainly don't want to bankrupt a Worldcon because of it. Thank you. 10 seconds. Nope. Yeah, it was a speech in favor. It was just a microphone that wasn't on. Um, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? All right. Mixed chairperson, I'm Kent Bloom, and uh, I would like to move to amend by adding after the comma uh, near the end, well, after supporting member, from, if, to, to add the words from, the, there, from any surplus they may have. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, so the motion is, one moment. Okay, the motion is to insert after the words per attending or supporting member, the text from any surplus they may have, so that the um, that portion would read in whole, um, donate US 30 cents per attending or supporting member from any surplus they may have to the MPC to fund the committee's operations. Um, debate time for amendments is normally defaults to five minutes, but not when we have fewer than that remaining. What is the total time we have remaining on this? Uh, we have eight seconds remaining four and a minute six remaining against if we're counting that as speech against what just happened. Okay, so no, it, we say that we divide those equally. Right, then we have a minute 21 seconds. Okay, four. so I mean the, the total amount left is, a, we're gonna say a minute 20, um, so we split that evenly. So we have basically 40 seconds of speech uh, on each side. Uh, request for information? Yes. Uh, could you clarify, is the amendment to be inserted after the word supporting member or after the comma after the word supporting member? Okay, so the parliamentary inquiry is about where it goes in relation to the comma. Um, I believe the motion was made to insert it after the comma. If people feel that that would be grammatically incorrect, that would be what we call an editorial revision, and we would not need to address it unless it would have a huge substantive change on the meaning, and the secretary can just take care of it. Uh, if, if I may say, I believe it does make a difference, but I think where it is is, is what was intended. Um, okay, so it sounds like we think we're good. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, what is before us is that amendment um, with 40 seconds of time on each side. Um, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Does the maker wish to speak in favor? Nope. Is there anybody else? Well, actually, then, nope. Sorry. I'm doing that thing where I'm going too fast. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the amendment? Andrew Adams, he, him. Uh, as one of the people who's been responsible for a Worldcon budget, I can say I fully support both the uh, amendment and the motion. We need to support the MPC. They do great work in supporting uh, Worldcons, and we should give the money, the money when we've got it, 
Con Zealand did so because we had this and we'll consider making more of a, a donation as, as well. Okay, that was a speech <laughs> in favor. Oh, you, can Mark put it up on the screen with the change so we can see what we're voting? Okay, I'm, so I'm going to restate and read again what it will be while Martin works on doing that so that we can continue with debate with some clarity and we will have that up on the screen by the time we take the vote. So the motion is to insert text after the comma, which is currently after supporting member and would still be after supporting member, so that that final portion would read, donate US 30 cents per attending or supporting member, comma, from any surplus they may have to the MPC to fund the committee's operations. That is what it will read. We are getting that up on the screen. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Chris Rose, he, him, uh, also a member of the MPC. I just want to reiterate that this is a voluntary donation. No qualifications are necessary. All you need to do is not voluntarily donate to the MPC if you are above past your budget. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak? Oh, Chris. Chris, I apologize. Um, how much time do we have left in favor? We have 18 seconds left in favor. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Jason Spitzer, he, him. I don't think it's the most important bit. I might have only... I'm going to ask, I'm sorry, there is chatter in the body that's making it difficult for me to hear the speaker. That's fine, I'll wait. N no, you're not the no, issue. No, 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 I know. I know. Um, I know. So I'm going to ask the body to stay in order and for the speaker to resume and to restart their clock. Restart, yep, thank you. Jason Spitzer, he, him. Um, it may not be the most urgent point, but I was going to further amend this request. I know it's voluntary to pass it, as we're all in support of the MPC, but to say, you know, uh, from a portion of surplus thereof or up to whatever portion the con could manage up to the requested amount. Okay, so that is a, a speech. Second order amendments are not in order. I, I'm, I'm aware, I'm clarifying for the body, oh, that the member was making a speech about an amendment that they might like to see, and as the body is mumbling, correct, second order amend amendments are not in order, but that's not what happened. It was just a speech, so we're good. Okay. Yep, you're, I, I hear your thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, that, okay, that was, that was a speech in favor, right? Yes, that's where we were in the, thank you. Is there a speech against? Okay, seeing none, is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor? We have two seconds left in favor. Okay. Seeing, I, I heard the motion to call the question even though I didn't recognize the speaker. Seeing nobody wishing to speak, we are going to move to a vote. So the item currently before us is amending D.8 to insert from any surplus they may have after supporting member comma. All those in favor of the amendment, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those opposed, please raise the hand. And the amendment passes. The item now before us is D.8 in its entirety, which now reads, resolved that the WISPIS business meeting requests that Worldcons donate US $1 per WISPIS member and non-Worldcon conventions sanctioned by WISPIS donate US 30 cents per attending or supporting member from any surplus they may have to the MPC to fund the committee's operations. We have like a few seconds left, maybe? Uh, I believe we ate through all of our, a lot of time. Okay, we're gonna say we ate through all of our debate time. Um, are there any motions needing to be made? Seeing none, we are going to move to a vote. A vote. Um, <laughs> I'm tired too, y'all. Uh, all those in favor of D.8 as amended, please raise the hand. Thank you, those against, and it passes. Okay, 
We are going to move to item D.9, business meeting study group, on page 17. Is there an objection to six minutes of debate time for this item? First, I need to figure out debate time. Uh, is there an objection to six minutes of debate time? Hearing none, debate time is set, set at six minutes. I will recognize you for your motion now. Garrett Kavner, he, him. I would like to propose to postpone this motion definitely until not be taken up before 10 a.m. Saturday. Unfortunately, the proposer of this motion had to leave the business meeting to go to a convention meeting. Okay. So um, the motion has been made to postpone this definitely to not be taken up basically before tomorrow's meeting. Um, I'm going to ask, since the proposer of the motion is not here, um, is there any objection to waiting until tomorrow to take up this item? Yes, but I'm understanding this to me that another proposer who is wishing to speak is not here. Is there any objection to waiting to take this item up until tomorrow? Hearing none, we will move on. That brings us to D.10, the Hugo Process Study Committee. Is there an objection to six minutes of debate time for this item? Hearing none, debate time is set at six minutes. Is one of the proposers here to speak? Uh, page 18. Hello, my name is James Bacon, he, him. I'm one of the proposers of this committee. I think that uh, given recent events, uh, it might be uh, wise to form a committee of people who are learned, have an understanding both of our Hugo processes, but also external observers. Now, I'd be hoping that people who maybe have a background in both law and perhaps, uh, how would you say, corporate consulting, uh, who are included actually as uh, co-proposers here, would consider joining such a committee so they could review, consider, and report back with information about what is what, how much things cost, what could be done, and make a proposal. If there is one to be there, make recommendations. It's things that we can consider. But I feel that we need to be more fully informed at times. People seem to have spoken quite a lot about external people coming to do things with the Hugos. Let's reflect, calmly make good, solid inquiries, and get this committee to do work and come back and inform us next year of what the options are and what they're putting forward. Okay, thank you. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Mr. Chairperson, my name is Kent Bloom, and uh, I think it's premature to make this committee. We have so many things on the agenda item that would make what the, what the committee has to do, either irrelevant or redundant. And I think we should wait and decide whether or not to do this uh, when it comes up during the discussion of changes to the Hugo process, uh, rather than making it now, unless, of course, you, you think you want to refer all of the Hugo changes to that, and I don't think we do. So I think we should wait. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? In the back. The back-ish, yeah. The, I could tell you were the first person back. <laughs> yeah, no, fair. Uh, Kendall Bullen, he, him. Um, I also feel there's some overlap, but I take the opposite stance uh, in that I feel that it's good to go proceed with setting up the study group, and this may make the body decide that certain later resolutions should proceed or should be thrown to the committee. So I think it's good to set this up ahead of time because it may save some time later also. So. 
That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Kate Secor, she, her. Given the um, stunning track record of WISPA's committees as embodied by this, by this meeting in my experience, and I'm sure in many of yours, I am not convinced what the value is of setting up a committee to do this when we already know that there are many, many tracks of informal discussion. I am concerned that if we set up an official committee, those discussions will be squashed because that should go to the committee, and yet committees in my experience, have not been super effective ways to get things done for this particular body. Okay, that was a speech in against. Um, are you wishing to make a speech or do you have another motion? Okay, so I'm gonna ask for you to wait until I ask for speeches in favor um, to ask to be recognized. So that was a speech against. Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor? Brianne Reeves, she, her. Uh, my biggest concern about not having this committee and, and choosing to push off a conversation formally about this is twofold. Uh, first, that you know, by not having a formalized process by which we collate the many, many conversations that are being had about the needs of Worldcon, um, especially these administrative concerns, we don't have a formal place to know and recognize that all of those conversations are happening, have happened, and what conclusions have come from them. Uh, so a committee like this is fundamentally one for collating. Uh, furthermore, some of the further, well, some of the later proposals that people are referencing that might make this redundant, I think, are often written in haste and perhaps have not considered the totality of the behind the scenes of Worldcon and uh, the greater way that the mechanisms move, uh, whereas this committee would be dedicated to making sure that proposals such as those uh, would further incorporate that knowledge and, and make sure that they actually fit rather than uh, reacting in haste to some of the events that have led up to our convention this week. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Um, having all, uh, Joshua Chronicles, he, him. Having also been a member um, of a committee to which a whole bunch of business was pushed, without us as a body, expressing our opinions on the individual matters and individual ideas, the committee has no good guidelines for what to do. Let's wait to create a committee until we have some business to push to them. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Uh, can you run the mic, please? And can we get a time check? We have 22 seconds in favor. <laughs> I'd actually like to make a motion at this point rather than f speak in favor. Okay, can you state your name? Lou Walkoff. I'll spell it out because nobody's going to get it right. Well, it's he, he, him. Yeah. Okay. What is your motion? I would like to move that if this, if this motion to create this committee is passed, that all subsequent motions on the agenda relating to the Hugo Awards be considered input to the committee and be tabled by, uh, pending the release of the committee report. Okay, so the motion is that should this pass to refer a bunch of stuff to it. So that's out of order um, for a, a couple reasons. Um, it, it's First of all, it's not in order to sort of do hypothetical chained things like that. Also, one of the things the preliminary meeting cannot do we, if we refer something to committee, it is only to report back at a main meeting. Um, should the motion pass and you wish to refer certain items to it, um, that would be in order um, once we are at a main business meeting. Um, so if that's something that should it pass you are wanting to do, please come speak to the head table and we can talk about the best way to do that. 
Are you wishing, so you're wishing to speak in favor of the? Of, of the motion, yes. That would be in order, yes. My, if, my, okay, thank you. Um, there are a wide variety of proposals that have currently be put, but, uh, that have currently been put uh, out, that are on the agenda, which come from many different angles. Ten this com committee will give us a chance to consider them as a coherent whole, rather than as totally disparate items. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Uh, we have one second in favor and one minute, 33 seconds against. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay. Kevin Stanley, he, him. Based on the past track history of, mo of committees of this sort, I think the w worst possible thing we could do if we want coherent recommendations is to create an open-ended, uninstructed committee to think about the Hugo Awards. <laughs> okay, that was a speech against. Time has elapsed for speeches in favor. Is there anybody else wishing to speak against? I will remind the body that calling the question is not a privileged motion. It does not take precedence and it is not allowed to interrupt. You get to make it if I call on you. Mike's chair, Cliff Dunn, he, him. I will concur with my colleagues speaking before. These committees have a habit of either uh, dissipating into the ether or getting stalled out. At best, we end up getting a bunch of stuff that was shoved together at the end of the 12 months, right before the deadline, praying we can get a report in on time. And it's not been terribly productive, and the business meeting often rejects the committee's advice anyway. Okay, that was a speech against. How much time is left remaining? 49 seconds. Okay, is there anybody else wishing to speak against? Seeing none and with time elapsed in favor, we will move to a vote. The item that we are voting on is D.10, the creation of a Hugo Process Study Committee. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those opposed? And the ayes have it and the motion passes. Um, and so the Hugo Process Study Committee is created. As noted in it, uh, I get to make some decisions. Um, are any of the proposers of the motion interested in chairing this committee? James. Okay. Is there persons in here that are wanting and think they would I want to be very clear just because you raise your hand doesn't mean I'm going to pick you, but I don't want to pick people who don't want to chair. Is there anybody in here who is interested in chairing this committee? Okay. What is, uh, sorry, I'm forgetting your name. Bree Reeves. Bree Reeves? Okay. Um, so for those not familiar, generally what our practice is at, at the business meeting is that when the membership of a committee um, isn't specified in the motion, which it normally isn't, um, the chair normally picks one of the proposers, and if one of the proposers isn't interested, somebody else in the body who is to chair, and then the membership of the committee is made up of anyone who wishes to join it, um, and we don't get more specific than that. So. Um, I'm going to appoint Bree, who had a last name that I've forgotten, Reeves, Reeves thank uh, to chair the Hugo Process Study Committee. Those interested in joining should give their name and information either to Bree or to the secretary. And because Bree probably has a life, probably to the secretary to pass along to Bree. Um, and uh, then Bree will be able to get in contact with people and uh, form the committee. So we are at 2.53. We have a hard stop at three o'clock. The next items before us are those that need to be handled in executive session. So. Jessica, yeah, yeah. Point of order. Uh, and Bree, please come see me really quick after, the, after we're done. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. There's a point of order. Okay. Okay. So um, 
the point of order has been made, there's been a misspelling. Please get the correct spelling of your name to the secretary and we will get it corrected for the minutes. Um, I will encourage uh, item proposers to remember to check on spelling of names before they submit them to us because we don't know everyone. Um, okay, so we are going to go into recess until tomorrow, um, adjourn until tomorrow. Um, we are going to start tomorrow with D11 and D12 in executive session rather than doing D8 and then popping into executive session and popping out. Yes, Mr. Pomeranz. Can you explain when we will get copies of the thing? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so for those that are unaware, um, there are two items that were submitted to the business meeting that due to concerns about Scottish defamation law, we did not print in the agenda. We have the text of both of those items that have been prepared um, by the makers of the motions, and we will have those to distribute tomorrow. Um, so we will begin at 10 a.m. tomorrow in executive session, which means that it will not be live streamed or recorded, or the um, details of the proceedings included in the public minutes. We are at very close to our hard stop. I understand that there may be questions about this. I will be explaining in more detail tomorrow morning when we begin. If you have questions, you are free to come ask me about them once we are adjourned, not in this room because other people need it. But unless somebody has something that they feel they really need to scream right now. Oh, nobody did. <laughs> D9. You're, yes, you're correct. I'm sorry. D9. We dealt with D8. D9 is the thing that was postponed. You are correct. Thank you for clarifying. We will start with D10 and 11, and we will handle D9 after the executive session. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to say this once more. D11, D12, executive session. After that, when we're not in executive session, D9. Okay, the question was when we start tomorrow, we're we in the preliminary business meeting. No, we're not. Uh, we will no longer be in the preliminary business meeting. We will be in a main meeting, but we will be doing the things that we were hoping to get done today during that meeting. And that means that also the additional rules that were phrased as being in order for the preliminary meeting, those will still be in order until we finish the quote unquote first pass. You have two seconds. What's your question? We don't need a, mo uh, a motion to adjourn. So we are in recess until 10 a.m. tomorrow where we will start an executive session.